Ooh, everybody. It's Monday. So today we are going to talk about circles and we're talking about applique circles. We're not talking about circle curved piecing because I will avoid curved piecing if at all possible. If I'm going to make a circle or I'm going to make an orange peel or I'm going to make something with a curve, chances are almost always I'm going to applique it in one way or another. And I know there are people who are going applique. I don't like applique. So I didn't used to like applique either until I discovered um, print and piece fuse. So I will applique like a crazy person with print and piece fuse and using this embroidery stabilizer to make circles. So that's what we're going to do. This is my um, bubble up quilt or table runner that I made at Soposium. So this is, this is a variation on a Karen Montgomery pattern. Um, she, when we go to Soposium, she gives us her new patterns. Just here, test them and tell me what's wrong with them. There wasn't anything wrong with it. I just didn't do what she told me to. Um, you know, we kind of missed the whole, I missed the whole point on making this one. The way she made hers, all the bubbles either touched or overlapped so that it was easier to quilt them. I did my thing. Using this technique, it was super easy to fussy cut these and get these right in the center. So that's what I'm going to show you. I am using power mesh. This is fusible. Oh, I didn't pick up the fusible one. Anyway, the one I'm using is fusible. You can use fusible, not fusible. It's up to you. I like fusible because then I can stick it where I want it and iron it down. It comes in a natural, so it's like an off-white. It comes in nude. And it also comes in black, which I forgot to grab. People ask me a lot when, when we have these two different um, stabilizers in, in front of us, why the nude? Like, what's the point in using the nude? The best way I have been, it's been explained to me and in my experience is if you put a nude color under white, and we're going to do that today so you can see, if you put the nude color under a white fabric, it cancels out some of the background fabric so you don't get as much bleed through. If you're going to do, so let's say we're going to make some eight inch circles and some four inch circles. So if I'm going to make some four inch circles, I'm going to take this piece of stabilizer and I'm going to split it three ways. Okay, try to make sure that you don't have a big gap here and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to put my finger under there and I'm going to fold this in thirds. Then I'm going to take it this way and I'm going to fold it in thirds again. Basically what I'm going for is a square. If I'm going to do something bigger then this is probably going to get me about a five inch circle. Yeah, I can get a five inch circle out of this one. If I'm going to do anything bigger than this, then just fold it in half and fold it in half. That being said, if I know I'm going to make a dozen circles, I'm going to go ahead and take three layers of this stuff and fold it in half and fold it in half. And then we're going to do this. And I know this seems weird, but stay with me for a second. I'm going to take what my little weird trifold sandwich I made, and I'm just going to put a pin in the center. So then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. Just have my regular J foot on my machine. I'm going to start on a fold. I don't want to start out here where there's raw edges, so I'm going to start on a fold. And I'm just going to sew all the way around all four sides. I'm going to take all my layers. This is my quick trim circle cutting ruler from Creative Grids. It is a 12 inch by two and a half inch wide ruler. It does lots of things like flippy corners and things like that. My favorite use for this though is to make circles. I've got enough space between my stitch lines to make up to a nine and a, uh, a nine inch circle. What I love about this ruler is these pivot points right here. Let me cut anything an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch increments. So the way that I have found to measure out my my measurements. Here's my pivot points. So if I know I'm going to do whole numbers, if I know I'm going to do a six inch circle, I'm going to start in that first pivot point because that's the zero point. If I know that I want to make say a six and a half inch, I'm going to go to this quarter inch right here because two quarters makes a half. And each circle, each whole line, 
has a pinhole. So if I take my straight pin and I put it in the pivot point, so let, just to be fun, let's do a, a half inch mark, okay? So I'm gonna put my pin in the middle right there in this quarter inch pivot. So if this is in the quarter inch pivot, I now know that I have a half inch circle or a half inch measurement start point. Every one of these holes is gonna give me an extra two inches, okay? So we are going to do our math and figure out where the outside circle is. So if I was to use this line and then go out to three and a half, or let's say, let's say four and a half, because I can get a bigger circle that way. Here is two inches, three inches, four inches. And then each quarter inch line is gonna give me a half inch. So if I start right here at this four and a half inch circle, here's two, four, six and a half, seven and a half. Does that make sense? There is a YouTube video if that, if Karen makes more sense with it. So I'm gonna take my pen, I'm gonna stick it in that four and a half inch reference. I'm just going to make a circle all the way around this stabilizer. I'm using a friction pen, but I'm using a felt tip friction pen, so I don't have to push very hard to make a nice consistent line. So when I cut through this, I'm going to have four circles. So I want to show you how easy this stuff is to cut through. Even through nine layers, my scissors go through it like butter. It is, it is an easy thing to cut through. Now, when I cut through these bigger ones, this is why we sewed the edges down. Because when we sew the edges down, the layers don't move as I'm cutting them. The big piece, we're gonna put the shiny side, so the fusible side against the right side of our fabric. And put that on and we're just going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So I have my J foot set to where this is about a quarter inch seam allowance. Here's some tips on sewing a circle. See where my hand is? And I'm just lightly turning my whole hand and that's making the, turkle, the circle turn. If you just let the machine do it for you, don't sew too fast. Don't go zooming. Just lightly let the fabric turn with the palm of your hand. Now, I'm just gonna take and cut around my fabric or around my circle. And if you cut into the stabilizer at this point, it doesn't really matter. In fact, if you wanna do this with pinking shears and make your seam allowance a little bit more narrow, that's fine. It's all good. Now. Now what? Now I have an upside down circle. If you take these and pull them apart from each other so that it makes this sort of like weird dumpling. I've got all this stabilizer out here and as long as your fabric's out of the way, you can't cut this hole too big. Cut it as big as you want. Then you're gonna reach in and you're gonna turn all of your fabric right way out. This is where I like to use my point to point turner because it's got a curve. And I want to make my circle as round as possible because remember, this is fusible. So we're going to push this all the way around with our point to point turner. You'll notice your fabric is heavier than your stabilizer. So see how the fabric is pulling to the back side just a little bit? That is exactly what you want because then you don't see the stabilizer on the front. Now you have a circle. Look at that. Look at that. And if I take this to my iron, then I'm just going to fuse the whole thing down, which is going to press my edges and stick this to my background fabric all at the same time. Now this is an in the hoop embroidery stabilizer, so you do kind of have to get it kind of hot. Okay. I am going to say that it does take a little bit of time for it to really fuse nicely. 
but the reality is we're going to take it over to our machine right now and we're going to stitch it down. So it doesn't have to be glued for a hurricane. My favorite applique stitch is called a double blind hem or double double blind blanket stitch. Unlike a regular blanket stitch, it takes three stitches in between before it pops in. Okay, so I'm going to use the center little mark on my J foot and line it up with the edge of my circle. I'm going to do a tie off stitch so that it's hidden and neat. Then I'm just going to stitch around this circle. It's just these very little tiny pop-in stitches and the little stitches that are in the outside of the circle are practically invisible. You can use a monofilament thread and then they are invisible. So I hope you guys want to make some circles and I hope that I've inspired you to realize that circles are not that scary.